Joining us now on the hotline is Andy Kendi of KETV. Andy, what's going on? Hi, boys. My voice is really bad this morning, so I'm doing my best. I'm struggling through. AK, who were you yelling at? Because I know you're not. It's not just normal conversation that's got you <laughs> like that. Who, like who? Who? Who's in? Who's in the doghouse? Is t- t- well, Tyler not doing right not again, my, or what? I'm gonna say certainly not my kids. I haven't seen them in about three weeks. So, God, um, you guys yeah, are going I, through that stretch, man. I feel bad for you. It's it's it, it's uh. They call it March Madness for a reason. So this morning, let me let me give you a little briefing. So <laughs> Ben Smith, our, our photographer Ben Smith, who was with me last week in Memphis, had two days to do his laundry. Now he's on the road taking the same exact flight that we took last week to Detroit, except this time there's no connection with Matt Satilli. So they're actually just landing in Detroit this morning. So they're going to cover the Jays. And then Lauren Michelson, after coming back from Corvallis, she had a day to figure it out, and she's actually moving apartments during this stretch, so figure, adding that to the mix. She's getting in a car with one of our newest employees, Eddie Messel, who is now going to take over as our weekend morning news anchor, but also has a sports background from his days in Lincoln. So Eddie and Lauren are headed up to Sioux Falls this morning to cover the Omaha hockey team in their first trip to the, to the NCAA hockey tournament in a few years. So they're going to be up there and I get to anchor the desk. So I may just hold up a sign saying, guys, take it away. So, <laughs> <laughs> so here, Hey, so let me ask you something, AK, you're trying to settle in and listen, Omaha's doing their thing in hockey. Our boss is, is arguably the biggest hockey fan, maybe in the city. And I know he'll, he'll probably, he's not much of a fighter, but probably fight some guys over that title. Um, you, you've got what's going on with Creighton that you just gave the rundown and the reference of what's going on. How do you know what you need to kind of gravitate towards if it's not something obvious, dare I say, like football? Well, it's, and it's interesting too, DB, because how is this spring compared to every other spring that you've been a part a lot of? More vo- a lot more volatile. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot yeah, going on. There's so much <laughs> stuff going on. And normally this is spring football. We are in high spring football. We're breaking down the the two deep and talking depth charts and who's going to be the first three wide receivers to line up on uh, on the first Saturday of the season. Instead, we're trying to prioritize what goes first, what goes second, what gets the best, you know, uh, the, the the most shine on each particular day. The way I look at it normally is the closer the game day you are, the more shine you get. Um, but that's also dependent on what kind of access we get. So, mm. um, you know, hockey has been a couple of years since we've been up there. So it's not, we. it's kind of more of an unknown quantity. Like, I'm not sure what Lauren's going to track and Eddie is going to track down today, but I'm confident they're going to get some good material out in, in Sioux Falls. And the thing about hockey, too, is there are far fewer media people who cover hockey than, than hoops. Basketball, especially when you get to that second weekend, it is every man from every man and woman for himself because it is a it, there's a lot of media. Um, <laughs> you know, you just it is like you guys saw it in Omaha this last week. Just multiply it by two or three. So, um, and I'm and I'm gonna I'm good. gonna I'm gonna say this, AK, and give a shout out to you know McCarvel, Brandon, and all the folks that got CHI ready with the media the the past the press there you guys have some horror stories whether it was in memphis (laughs) or pittsburgh like we take how the media is treated and handled in this state for granted but you can assure it's not like this everywhere else is it no question about it um, it's it's unbelievable it really is. And we were talking about it in Memphis, too. You know, the Memphis setup, they were set up in where the Grizzlies uh, play their games and their practice facility is connected. And we were set up in the where the where the practice facility is. Um, so it was kind of a, you know, it, it was a journey to get down to the to the access areas, which is a <laughs> locker room floor, that type of thing. The setup that Omaha has for or an NCAA tournament is as good, if not the best in the country. And the people they have running it is the best in the country. And I'm not just saying that because I live here in Omaha. I say that because I've been 
all around the country covering yep. these things. Yep. And this year was an interesting year too, because remember Rob Anderson, who normally was at home base in Omaha, he traveled with Creighton. So Glenn Sisk had to take over and their crew and Glenn, it was like, they didn't miss a beat. So props to that group. And we all know what a great job Rob does with Creighton and athletics. And it, it was it, from what I heard from people who, you know, our, our Des Moines people were in Omaha and they raved about uh, the setup in Omaha and Memphis wasn't terrible. It just wasn't Omaha. And I think Omaha is the gold standard. We, you know, we talked about Troy Dan yesterday and talking about the standard set or what have you. Well, the standard set in media uh, in terms of setup for NCAA tournament, that's Omaha, Nebraska, in terms of the logistics. We're talking with Andy Kendi from KETV. So with everything going on, have you not been going through the little Husker half a second video clips they're putting out and being like, hey, that kind of looks like a dime from Dylan Rayola, but I can't really tell. You're not you're not Zapruder <laughs> filming the uh, little Twitter clips because I, I maybe have I saw, been just like a little bit. <laughs> I've seen day one. I saw day one the other day. I, I haven't seen since, but um, I, I it, it is interesting to see. We'll get our glimpse tomorrow, of course. Not You know, tomorrow's our first first crack at it you know we'll have a video opportunity in the morning and so we'll get our first chance to see dylan rayola and company and it will be interesting to 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 see how the layout to see to see these guys in you know actual uniforms and helmets and doing doing football activities um it's been so much talk about this group of people uh it'll be interesting finally to have some video on them fun or are you nervous and i you're not really approaching this from a fan as much as uh you're doing stories but seems to be as many answers as questions or whichever one you want to put first with 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 this version of nebraska football is that exciting i think so because it, you know it, it goes back to to um who's leading the charge right and i think um there's enough uh uh confidence in matt rule that i think i think there there is reason to drink the kool-aid you know, and the pieces that they have is, is exciting, especially, you know, I look at the wide receivers because that's probably one of the more obvious ones. I want to see what Jamal Banks is all about. You know, I want, he's a big guy. I want to see him. Yeah, a lot, lot of buzz, isn't there? And, yeah. And I want to see what, what Isaiah Nair looks like and, and see what uh, the rest of the receiving core looks like, I, you know, because I, I, and, and obviously you, you got to see the quarterbacks throw the ball. You watching Rayola on tape versus watching Rayola in person is two different things. I, I can't wait to see with my own eyes tomorrow. And I, you know, I think that you can't help but be excited about this team because they were so close last year, and you get the sense that this year could be a pivot point in the program. Um, now that they've figured out who their new is, uh, I think this. Uh, I think we're headed in the right direction now after a couple weeks of uncertainty and head scratching. That's Andy Kendi from KETV. Andy, we appreciate your time as always. Rest up that voice and uh, maybe go say hi to your kids. Yeah, no, no. The kids are at school. I'm going to I'm gonna take a lot of this to drink some tea. There you go. There you go. Get that, <laughs> uh, get that voice taken care of. We'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thanks, boys. AK.